Chapter 13, Labor and the Birth Process. There are factors that affect labor. We want to talk about the five P's. Passenger, which are the fetus and placenta. Passageway, the birth canal. Powers, contractions. Position of the mother. And the psychological response, which would be your fetal heart rate, fetal circulation, fetal respiration, maternal cardiovascular changes, and maternal respiration. Let's discuss passenger, that's the movement of the fetus through the birth canal, and this depends on the size of the fetal head, fetal presentation, fetal lie, fetal attitude, and fetal position. The fetal head, what you want to look at when discussing the fetal head is the rigidity. There are two parietal bones, two temporal bones, the frontal bone, and the occipital bone. The bones are united by sutures and membrane-filled spaces called fontanelles, which are located where the sutures intersect. Palpation of the fontanelles and sutures during a vaginal exam reveals fetal presentation, position, and attitude. Sutures and fontanelles make the skull flexible. This information is in your textbook, page 342. This is a picture depicting the fetal skull. Presentation. This is part of the fetus that enters the pelvic inlet first and leads through the birth canal during labor at term. Three pr main presentations are cephalic, breech, which are your buttocks, feet, or both, and shoulder presentation. The presenting part is the part of the fetus closest to the internal off of the cervix. You can read about this in your text, page 343. This um, diagram depicts vertex presentation, syncopate presentation, and a brow presentation. This picture depicts different fetal presentations, ROP, LOP, ROT, ROA, LOA, and LOT. There are different occipital positions that the baby may be presenting in. You can read more about this in your textbook, page 343. Fetal lie, it's a relation of the long axis, which is the spine of the fetus, to the long axis, or the spine of the mother. There are two primary lies, longitudinal and vertical. Transverse horizontal or oblique, which is the long axis of the fetus, is at the right angle diagonal to the long axis of the mother. Vaginal birth cannot occur if the fetus stays in a transverse lie. Oblique lie is less common and usually converts to a longitudinal lie during labor. Please go to page 343 in your text to read more about fetal lie. This picture depicts different presentations of reach for birth. They're um, located in your textbook, page 343. Let's discuss fetal attitudes. Attitude is the relationship of the fetal body parts to one another. The fetus assumes a posture of attitude in utero, shapes to the uterine cavity. Fetus is usually rounded with the chin flexed to the chest, thighs flexed to the abdomen, and the legs are flexed at the knees. Arms are normally flexed across the thorax. This attitude is a general flexion. Umbilical cord lies between the arms and the legs. Deviation from normal attitude may cause a difficult birth. Look at page 344 in your text. This is a picture detecting general flexion attitude. Let's discuss the biperiodal diameter and the suboccipital bipragmatic. Um, the bipyramidal diameter is an important indicator of fetal head size. It's the largest transverse diameter. It's 9.25 centimeters at term, the widest part of the head entering the pelvic inlet. The suboccipital pragmatic is the anterior posterior diameter that is most critical, allowing the fetal head to pass through the pelvis and measures 9.5 centimeters at term. See this information in your text, page 344 to 345. This is a picture depicting the bipyramidal diameter of 9.25 centimeters of the um, presentation of the infant's head. Discuss fetal position. This is the relationship of a reference point on the presenting part of the fetus to the four quadrants of the mother's pelvis. ROT is the right pelvis occipitate transverse. ROA is right pelvis occipitate anterior. And LMP is left pelvis mentum posterior. This information is on page 344 to 345 of your textbook. Let's discuss station.
Gestation is the relationship of the presenting part of the fetus to an imaginary line in the maternal ischial spine. It is a measure of the degree of descent of the presenting part of the fetus through the birth canal, measured in centimeters above or below the ischial spine. This is a picture depicting the ischial spines and the measurement at 0, negative 1, negative 2, and at 0, plus 1, plus 2. This is another picture um, depicting the fetal head in relation to the mother's pelvis. Um, engagement indicates the largest transverse diameter of the presenting part, usually the biparital diameter. Half the delay is composed of the mother's rigid, bony pelvis, soft tissue, cervix, pelvic floor, and the vagina. The mother's pelvis plays a large role in the labor process. The fetus must successfully pass through the rigid pelvis during the birth process. Measurements of the pelvis. Inlet diameter is 12.5 cm to 13 cm. Outlet transverse is greater or equal to 8 cm and the midplane transverse diameter is 10.5 cm. The inlet is the measurement that determines whether the presenting part of the fetus can engage or enter. The outlet presents the smallest plane of the pelvic canal and the midplane of the pelvis normally is its largest plane and the one of greatest diameter. We need to discuss powers. Um, powers are the involuntary and voluntary powers that are combined to expel the fetus and placenta from the uterus. Primary powers are involuntary, its contractions, which are effacement, dilation, and the Ferguson reflex. And secondary powers are voluntary, which are bearing down efforts, which have no effect on the cervical dilation. Effacement are shortening and thinning of the cervix during the first day of labor. Dilation is the enlargement and widening of the cervical canal that occurs once labor has begun, and the Ferguson reflex is the maternal urge to bear down triggered by the release of oxytocin caused by stretch receptors in the posterior vagina. Con contractions. You want to discuss frequency, which is the time from the beginning of one contraction to the beginning of the next. Duration is the length of a contraction, and intensity is the strength of a contraction at its peak. This is on page 347 in your textbook. Still discussing primary powers, effacement, shortening and thinning of the cer cervix during the first stage of labor, and dilation, enlargement or widening of the cervical opening in, in the cervical canal that occurs once labor has begun. Dilation occurs as a result of the contractions. position of a laboring woman. The position affects the woman's anatomic and physiologic adaptions to labor. Frequent changes in position are important. They relieve fatigue, increase comfort, and improve circulation. The laboring woman should be encouraged to find positions most comfortable to her. This is on page 350 in your textbook. Process of labor. Labor is the process of moving the fetus, placenta, and membranes out of the uterus and through the birth canal. Various changes take place in a woman's reproductive system in the days and weeks before labor begins. Labor can be discussed in terms of mechanisms involved in the process and stages the woman moves through. Process of labor continued. Signs preceding labor. Lightning or dropping, bloody show, Braxton Hicks, or a surge of in energy. And then you have the onset of labor. So lightning or dropping is a fetal head descending into the pelvis two weeks prior or before term in the first time pregnancies. Bloody show is a brownish blood tinged mucus that is passed. Braxton Hicks contractions are strong, frequent, and irregular. Surge of energy, oftentimes this happens just before labor um, begins. And uh, the onset of labor, onset of true labor cannot be ascribed to a single cause. Many factors involved, including changes in maternal uterus, cervix, and hormonal changes that occur. Process of labor, you have your stages of labor. Your first stage is onset of contractions to full dilation of the cervix. There's three phases. Um, you have your latent effacement cervix, active and transition, more dilation of the cervix and descent of the presenting part. Second stage, full dilation to birth, two phases, latent, fetus descending passively and fetus 
rotates to anterior position due to uterine contractions, and you have active strong urges to push. Third stage, birth of the fetus until delivery of the placenta. And fourth stage, it's about two hours post delivery of the placenta assessed for complications of the mother. This is just a picture depicting the stages of labor. Mechanisms of labor. Seven cardinal movements of mechanisms of labor that occur in the vertex presentation. Their engagement, descent, flexion, internal rotation, extension, restitution, and an external rotation, and expulsion, which is the birth. These are the cardinal movements of the mechanisms of labor. A is engagement and descent. B is flexion, C is internal rotation to occiput interior position, D is extension, E is external rotation beginning, F is external rotation. This is on page 352 of your text. This is a YouTube video uh, depicting the process of labor. Fetal adaption, these changes occur if fetal heart rate Early in gestation, as high as 160 beats a minute, as the fetus reaches term around 140 beats per minute. Fetal circulation can be compromised if the cord is compressed. Uterine contractions tend to decrease circulation, but the fetus is able to compensate. In fetal respiration, there are chemoreceptors in the aorta and carotid that prepare the fetus for initiating respirations. Maternal adaption. As a woman progresses through the stages of labor, various body system adaptions cause her to exhibit both objective and subjective symptoms. Maternal adaption. Cardiovascular changes. Cardiac output increases about 51% by the end of the first stage of labor. Blood pressure is increased with contractions. Respiratory changes. Increased respiratory rate. Second stage of labor, oxygen consumption can double. Renal changes, proteinuria 1 plus can happen in response to the breakdown of muscle tissue from laboring. <coughs> Maternal changes, um, integumentary, distensibility or stretching in the area of the vaginal introitus, musculoskeletal, joint aches, fatigue, and back aches. The laboring woman may have increased temperature due to increased activity. Neurologic, the laboring woman will exhibit different sensorial changes with each stage of labor, elation and fatigue. She will all have a, uh, also have an increased pain threshold due to chemical endorphins that are released and a decreased sensation of perception to pain in the perineal tissues due to pressure in the presenting part. Thank you, and this is the end of Chapter 13.